Blowering Dam is located on the Tumut River in southern New South Wales, approximately 13 kilometres south of the town of Tumut. The dam was constructed between June 1964 and September 1968 to store water for irrigation, mainly for the Murrumbidgee and Colliambly irrigation areas. A hydroelectric power station with an output of 80 megawatts produces electricity for Snowy Hydro Proprietary Limited. On average, it generates enough power annually to supply 40,000 people. Water is made available for power generation only when releases are made for water users, the environment and during flood operations. In tandem with Burrenjuk Dam, Glowering Dam supplies customers along the Murrumbidgee River, Yanko, Colombo and Billabong Creek systems, the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area and the Colliambly Irrigation Area. Glowering Dam is the sixth largest embankment dam and ninth highest dam in Australia. It's owned and operated by the State Water Corporation and is the final dam in the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme flow. My involvement on this whole job was as the designer of the spillway. I started in 1963 as a 25-year-old for the Snowy Mountains Authority and worked on it up until about 1966. It has got a 60 metre wide spillway crest and at the bottom of the spillway, which we can see behind me, is the flip bucket and it is about 20 metres wide. The total height of the spillway from the crest to the bucket is nearly 300 feet or 100 metres. The biggest flow that has been down the spillway is 20,000 megalitres per day. Investigations into the use of this dam site started way back in 1907 when the then Department of Public Works of New South Wales were investigating sites for dams for irrigation storages. This work picked up again in the Depression years in 1931 up to the beginning of the war. 1949 when the Snowy Scheme started, the site was the obvious place to put the store for the Snowy Mountain Scheme. The Water Conservation Irrigation Commission New South Wales did extensive investigations throughout the 1950s, but still the start on the dam was delayed to the point that it was becoming uh, desperate for the snowy. So the federal government in 1963, budget night 1963, passed an act which made the Snowy Mountains Authority the design and constructing authority for the dam. The investigation completed by the Commission confirmed that conditions were suitable for the construction of an earth or rock filled dam and the authority continued the initial design studies on that basis. The site was selected as probably one of the only ones to give us a large storage beyond this small length of valley if you like we break out into the plains beyond Tumut. The site was developed to its fullest. The ridge I'm standing on here now dictates the height of the dam in the long run. And lo and behold, just as we were coming out of the 1967 drought, it rained and the reservoir was filled fairly rapidly over the next year or so. The dam was selected as an embankment dam, that is earth fill and rock fill construction. The dam has a central core, flanking filters, two rock fill shoulders. At the bottom of the dam on the left abutment, we have the power station, which is a single unit power station, and that runs during the release season for the irrigation. 
The purpose of the scheme was to divert water for irrigation purposes. Hence the two large storages at the end of the scheme on each of the rivers, namely Hume Dam and Blowering Dam. On its way through from the Snowy, the water falls some 800 metres and generates power. And that is the paying component, if you like, of the scheme. The Blowering Dam catchment area is 1,606 square kilometres and the submerged area at full supply level is 44.6 square kilometres, which is more than 6,000 football fields. The storage capacity at full supply level is 1,628,000 megalitres, which is about three times the capacity of Sydney Harbour. The height of the dam, including the parapet wall, is 114 metres, which is taller than a 35-storey building. The crest length of the dam is 747 metres. The maximum water depth is 91 metres. My job as storage custodian of Blaring Dam is to look after the, the safety of the wall, to read various surveillance instruments and report any changes to our surveillance engineers, also responsible for the discharge changes for river flows uh, depending on the demand downstream. These um, orders or, or the amount of water that they want discharge is given from our river ops people at Leeton who gather the water orders from the irrigators. Inspections and safety of the dam involve, involves reading various, uh, taking various readings rather of things like the groundwater, our seepage readings which are leakage through the dam wall, they're read at this point in time twice a week. Piezometer readings which are readings of the pressure in, within the clay particles in the, in the wall, they're read once a month. Um, and then we've got some cross arm instruments which me measure settlement and, and they're read every six months. Since 1968, when the dam was finished, it has spilt various years. 1971, 1974, 1984 and 1992 and 2010. The lowest uh, storage capacity the dam's been uh, since 1968 is 1% and that was in 2003. In January 2010 the dam was 29%. In October, November 2010 the dam is now 100% and that's a remarkable uh, recovery to to fill from 29% to 100%, that's a huge amount of water. Yeah, in the middle of summer, this dam in conjunction with Burrenjuk Dam supply water to the Murrumbidgee irrigation season. The um, farmers order the water depending on the crops they're growing and the climate conditions at the time when it's hot and dry, the demand on water from both dams is pretty high. This dam, generally the river will run and then, uh, which is about 9,000 megalitres a day, and Burrenjuk will supplement the difference. And that, that two combined flows supply the needs for the Murrumbidgee irrigation area. And customers immediately downstream of the dam, including urban townships from here to basically Hay. Bowering Dam is a popular location for recreation and it's where Ken Warby set the world record for the fastest man on water in his boat Spirit of Australia on the 8th of October 1978. There's real magic in the air at Bowering Dam today. Spirit of Australia has never looked or sounded better. Twenty-eight point nine seven miles per hour, with a speed coming out of the kilo of 345 miles per hour, the fastest speed man has ever travelled on water. Ken Warby, in Spirit of Australia, the boat he designed and built himself, has completely rewritten the record books. <laughs> 